Good morning, everyone. It is so good to have you join us today for this special Ascension Day service. This isn't something we've always been able to do in the past, but there's a real joy today as we can gather on this very special day and celebrate this time together. So why don't you join me even now? Why don't you stand to your feet as we open in prayer? Let's do that together. So Lord Jesus, we think of the text in Acts 1, which describes the disciples staring intently into the sky as you were taken up into heaven. And today, Lord, we want to fix our gaze on you. We want you to fill our gaze. King of kings, Lord of lords, come and fill our gaze. Even now, as we come to worship you, we pray, Lord, that you would be with us by the power of your spirit. Thank you for your presence with us now, Lord. Thank you for such a time even of rejoicing and celebrating as we praise and worship you. Bless this time, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Let's worship him together. Thank you. Yeah. 
Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, cause nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do.
join me today and just saying, Jesus, we praise your name. We magnify your name, Lord. We just say, Lord, that today we celebrate you. Today our eyes are upon you, Lord. We worship you, King of kings, Lord of lords. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for this time. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for us, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we celebrate you today. We love you, Lord. We worship you. And together we all said, Amen and Amen. Wonderful. Take your seats, please. And uh, as we turn now to, to look at where we're going today, we've been busy with a series called The Road to Pentecost, where we've looked at the last 40 days of Jesus on earth from the time of his resurrection and to, through to his ascension. And so we thought, what better way to finish this series than today, on Ascension Day, the very day we remember Jesus returning to his Father in heaven. So that's where we're going to be going today. We're landing the series. But even so, we could start off with this question. Isn't it a little strange to celebrate or remember a day where someone goes away, where they leave us? I mean, think about it, especially when it's someone really important, significant, gifted, someone hard to replace. So I'll give you an example. For those of us who are South African cricket fans, remember when Jacques Cullis retired from international cricket? You're talking about one of the best batsmen our country's ever produced. An incredible strike bowler. Some of the safest hands ever in the slips. Okay. You're talking about one of the greatest all-rounders ever to play the game of cricket. I mean, you don't just replace someone like it. You don't go out in the streets and just find someone who can do all three of those things as well as Jacques could. So when someone like that retires or steps down, it's not exactly a happy day, is it? You might think of a leader. Someone who you follow, just a great leader, someone you enjoyed following. When they stepped down, when they retired or when they went away somewhere, there was a sadness, wasn't there? So why celebrate and remember this day? And especially when we remember who it is we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus, who I won't have to convince you is the greatest man ever to have lived. Fully God and you fully man. So why is it that we would celebrate and remember the day when Jesus left planet Earth? To return to his father so with that question in mind i'm going to give you three reasons today why we and there are many more but there are three reasons why we can remember and celebrate ascension day together so before we look at the reasons let's look at the text acts chapter 1 verses 7 to 11 where jesus is speaking we read this he said to them it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. All right. Reason number one for celebrating for remembering Ascension Day is that Jesus had perfectly completed his mission on earth. That's one of the big things about today. We remember Jesus perfectly completing, not just completing, but perfectly completing his mission here on earth. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm sure it's true for you too. When you finish a project, when you do something, when it's behind you, there's a real sense of joy, isn't there? When it's completed, especially when it's gone well. I used to have this thing at school, a little bit too into my, my early varsity kind of career, but this was my thing at school. When my exams were finished, when I'd written my last exam and I came through the gates, when I arrived home, I used to take my bag and throw it up in the air as high as I could and then catch it. It was just my thing. Okay, having seen what my daughters and many other kids now pack into their bags, the number of, of uh, books that they overload in those bags they, dry, they drag around with them, it's not a good idea, I would say, unless you want to end up in hospital to be trying that anymore. But that was my thing. It was just a way of, of celebrating when those exams were done. Now, sticking with this thing of exams in schools, why don't we imagine a, a scholar, a learner, getting 99% for every single subject throughout their school career. I mean, we could tease them about missing 100%, but that would be a phenomenal achievement to get 99% as your average throughout your school career, okay? Friends, for Jesus, that would have been a fail. Even 99.999999% recurring would have been a fail. For Jesus, from the time he was a child, he had to get 100% every single day. Just think about that for a moment. Jesus couldn't have one bad day because if he'd sinned even once, he could never have represented sinners like you and me. He could never have taken our place and offered himself on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins. What an incredible thing. So this is a time we remember that Jesus lived the perfect life we could never live. This is a time that we remember Jesus fulfilling all of the righteous requirements of the Father's law on our behalf. And then, of course, we remember the injustice, the shame, and the suffering of the cross of Calvary. Remember that Jesus said this to his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said that there were 12 legions of angels just waiting for him to give the word, just waiting for him to call on them, and they would have come and helped him. But if Jesus had done that, he would never have completed his Father's mission. That would have spelled disaster for us. I mean, it would have been game over for humankind. There would have been no hope of salvation for you and for me. Now, I wonder if you've watched the musical. They made movies about it too, but the musical Les Mis. It's one of my favorites. I love the story. It is such a beautiful story of God's redemption. And so Jean Valjean is one of the main characters. Remember, it looks like his life is over. He has no future after he is imprisoned for stealing a loaf of bread to feed his starving family. It looks hopeless, but God in his great mercy, his grace and his love saves Jean Valjean. And not only that, he transforms his life. And as Jean Valjean's life is transformed, so the lives of so many others are impacted and transformed around him. And that, friends, is such a beautiful picture about what Jesus' mission was all about for us. It meant salvation. It meant redemption. It meant reconciliation to God the Father. And it also meant our lives being transformed. And through our lives being transformed, the lives of so many others around us being transformed to the glory of God the Father. Think about this, friends. This is a day, Ascension Day, is a day that we remember Jesus 100% perfectly completing his mission here on earth and then returning as a victorious all conquering king. It's important to remember that too. Think about this. Jesus could have just vanished for good from the view of his disciples. In those last 40 days, there were other occasions where Jesus would do that. He'd just appear and he'd disappear. Think about the road to Emmaus, appearing to those disciples and then disappearing when they were around the table together. But instead, Jesus 
very visibly and clearly ascends into the heavens in full view. And Tim Keller suggests that there's almost something of, of a coronation ceremony of a king being crowned, you might say, in this. Because you better believe that the party of all parties, the celebration of all celebrations was taking place on the original Ascension Day. I can only imagine just this triumphant victory parade that Jesus must have received down those golden streets of heaven. I believe it was probably the greatest celebration the universe had ever seen on the original Ascension Day. When Jesus came home to his father victorious, having perfectly completed his mission. And it's a great reason for us to also celebrate and remember this day. Amen. Reason number two has to do with the sending of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16 verse 7, Jesus said this. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now you press pause and you think, hey, oh, hang on a minute. This is the greatest man who's ever lived saying it's to our advantage that he goes away. But of course, Jesus goes on to explain what he means. He says, For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. This helper, of course, is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And like you, I can only be in one place at one time. I'm standing here recording this now. I can't be down at the shops doing some shopping. Right now in the lockdown, that's about the best outing we've got to look forward to. Isn't that so? We can only be in one place at a time. And even though Jesus was, of course, fully God, he was also fully man. And so Jesus was subject to the same limitation that we are. He could only be in one place at a time. But Jesus said if he went away, he would send the one who could be everywhere present. And that, my friends, of course, is the Holy Spirit. Because he is spirit, he is God with every one of us. He is with you right now as he is with me. And as Jesus said, he is our helper who leads us into all truth, who helps us to become like Jesus and helps us as we follow Jesus. He is the one who empowers us for ministry, who gives us boldness to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. This Christian life would be impossible if it were not for the Holy Spirit as our helper. And so, as Jesus was leaving earth, returning to heaven, the literal 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Countdown began because 10 days after Ascension Day came Pentecost with the great and powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so this is something we remember today. Even as Jesus was returning, he was getting ready to pour out, to send his Spirit exactly as he had promised. The Holy Spirit, our helper. Reason number three, and the last one we'll look at today is this. He's going to come back in the same way. He's coming back in the same way. Now, I wonder what those disciples must have felt as they watched Jesus going up and then hidden from their sight in that cloud. I, I mean, we read in the text, they were staring intently up into the sky. They must have felt sadness. Surely they must have. We've all experienced that in our lives, having to say goodbye to a loved one. Isn't that so? They probably felt bewilderment. They probably felt afraid. They probably felt uncertain about what the future was going to hold for them. Very much like so many people in the world around us today in the face of this pandemic. But then we read of these two angels who appear. They, they ask them, well, why are you standing staring up at the sky like this? And what the angels say is that Jesus is going to come back in exactly the same way as he left them. Isn't that just an amazing, amazing thought, friends? And so as much as Ascension Day is about remembering Jesus returning triumphantly and victoriously to his Father in heaven, it's also a great day to remember he's coming back in exactly the same way. All right, so I've got something for you to do today, okay? At some point today on Ascension Day, try to get outside as much as you can, even if it means if you're in a place you can only look out the window, but try to get to a place where you can stand and just look at the sky. Look up at the sky, all right? And while you're looking, I know this sounds so impossible, but try to imagine a cloud there, the cloud parting, and there is Jesus in all His glory, majesty and splendor the second coming of jesus christ okay i mean just i know our brain's going to spin but friends what a day that is going to be isn't that something just an incredible incredible thought and even as you do this there's a question that every human being has to ask and answer and the question is this will i be ready for the return of jesus will i be ready for the return of jesus jesus said these words in luke chapter 18 verse 8 he said however when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? 
Friends, this is the thing that Jesus will be looking for when he returns. He will be looking for a people of faith, a people who recognize they could never save themselves from their sins. And so a people who have put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. A people of faith who have been forgiven by God, who have right standing with God, who love God and who follow Jesus as his disciples, as his followers. Now, I know that the majority of you who are watching this today will have already been able to say yes to that question. You are a people of faith. You have called on the name of Jesus Christ to save you. You have right standing with God. And so you have this confidence, that the confidence that you are ready for his return. Now, even in these challenging times, friends, this gives us such hope and such joy. The day of Jesus' return will be the greatest day ever. It will be a day of indescribable joy for all those who belong to God, for all those who are His children, a people of faith. It really will. And I do want to just say this. I hope when Jesus returns, He will find strong faith, and a strong, strong faith in Him. But here's the other part of then that we need to ask ourselves. It's this. What about those who are not ready when Jesus returns? What about those who are not ready when Jesus returns, those who have never called on the name of Jesus to save them, those who are not a people of faith in God. And friends, there's not what I say. What the Bible teaches is that it'll be a day of great fear, of terrible dread. That thought, along with the love of God the Father, should compel us to at the very least be praying for those we know who are far from God, should compel us to reach out to them with the good news, to invite them in every possible way that we can, to be ready to share our stories with them of the difference that Jesus made in our lives, the transformation he has brought even now. So with that in mind, I do, as just before I pray for all of us, I want to say this today, if you are watching this message and you know that your life is not right with God, you know that right now you are not ready for the return of Jesus. If you had a God son, look up at the, at the sky and suddenly Jesus was there, you would not be ready. I want to give you an opportunity today to change that, right now to change that by making right with God, by calling on Jesus to save you, by becoming one of the people of faith. So I want to give you that opportunity. Can we bow our heads together and let's pray. And just join with me and agree with me as I pray this prayer. If you know your life is not right, if you are not ready for Jesus' return, pray this with me and say, Jesus Christ, I know that I'm not ready for your return. I've been trying my best to live the best life I can. But I know it's not good enough, Lord. Only you live the perfect life for me. And so, Lord, because of what you've done, because of your death and your suffering in my place, I know there's hope. And so today, Jesus, I call on your name to save me. I put my faith in my trust, my hope in you as my Savior. I confess that I've sinned against you, God. And I ask you today to forgive me for all of my sin. I repent. I turn away from the life I've been living to follow you, Jesus Christ. Today, I ask you to be my Savior and my Lord. I give you my love. And I thank you that you open up your Bible to me. I thank you that you fill me with your Holy Spirit, my helper, and that every day you give me grace to follow you as your disciple. I am yours, Jesus. I pray this now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just as we stay in this place of an attitude of prayer, if you prayed that prayer today, there's a response card that you'll see in the link below. We'd love it if you'd click it, if you'd let us know. It'll be a short thing for you to do, but we want to stand in agreement with you. We want to pray with you and help you in whatever way you can. So won't you do that, please? If you prayed that prayer today, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. And then I'd love to just, in closing, pray for all of us today and say, Jesus Christ, we stand in awe of you today again. Thank you, Lord, that on our behalf, you scored 100% every single day of your life. And on our behalf, you didn't call on those 12 legions of angels, but you went through, you endured the full shame, the humiliation, and the suffering, the agony, the injustice of the cross for us. Lord, we celebrate today, we remember today that when you return to the Father, you return victorious, triumphant. You returned with the mission completely and perfectly finished for us. Oh, Lord, we're so grateful for that. We celebrate that today. We also remember, Lord, that as you returned, you did what you promised 
10 days later, you poured out your Holy Spirit. That promise was fulfilled. And we now have the Holy Spirit with us. The Holy Spirit, our helper. We thank you for that today, Jesus. We really, really do. And we thank you too, Jesus, that as you ascended, that's exactly the same way. You're going to come back and return for us in the same way. And today, Lord, there's a rejoicing, even in the midst of all that we face. We have this great and this sure hope that you're coming back again, Jesus, in the same way you're returning for us. And we thank you today, Lord, that by your grace and through your power, we are able to say that we are ready for your return, that we are a people of faith. We have nothing to fear. We only have everything to look forward to. All the hope in the universe, Lord, because you are coming back for us again. We thank you for the say. We worship you, Lord. We celebrate you. We love you, King Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. Together we all said, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much, friends, for joining us today. Uh, it would be great to hear from you too. If there are any other prayer requests or any other responses, please make use of that response card. But have a great day further. Go and take a look at the sky sometime today. Go and just imagine Jesus coming back. Just imagine. And uh, I pray God bless you today. Thank you so much. Amen.